Hi everybody, so um, if you had a chance to watch tools, so tools are just to figure out what you need to do to replace the habit. So it's not just enough to say that you're going to replace the habit, you need to have tools around it. So I did a whole video on just tools. It was a bit long, so I apologize for how lengthy that video was, but um, if you're trying to figure out what tools to use, please do watch the video. If you don't, you can skip past this video if you already have your own tools. So the first part of um, this part is, is make a plan. So once you have your tools, make a plan and make an action plan. So your action plan will actually look like, I'm gonna wake up at this time, I'm gonna do this, this, and this, and you have goals per the day. So you're actually going to have certain goals for the day and you're gonna implement them throughout your day. So if you're having a really bad day and you know you know that something's going on, so maybe your goal can be like showering or your goal could be eating healthy just for that day. So if you're trying to quit smoking and you're trying to quit, um, not quit, so if you're trying to overcome procrastination and you're, you know, you're having a bad day and you kinda of need to escape a little bit, Try not to punish yourself. Make an action plan, but give yourself a little bit of wiggle room. And remember, give yourself a few rewards here and there. And if you're unable to do it, just forgive yourself. So research is showing us if we give ourselves the benefit of the doubt, like we give other people the benefit of the doubt, we're, we're more likely to establish a better relationship with ourselves. So best example is um, from Dr. Timothy Psycho is from one of his podcasts is um, the example is if you have somebody that you said something weird to during a meeting or you know you meet a friend and something weird was said something weird happened and every time you see them you kind of like avoid them can't make eye contact you're not really good friends anymore you can't really deal with each, with each other but if your friend was to come to you and say hey it's okay this stuff happens like weird stuff happens all the time don't worry about it so much um it's not a big deal you're more likely to forgive yourself and you're you're able to get past that experience and say okay things do happen so if you do that with yourself you can actually establish a better relationship so with that person you can actually establish a better relationship. You can laugh about it after. It can become a milestone for making your relationship better. So when we forgive ourselves and we provide ourselves with self-love, we actually are creating a better relationship with ourselves. So make a plan, make a goal, but if you fall off, just get back on again. Forgive yourself, say, okay, you know what? Today I had a delay. Today wasn't the best day for me. I'm going to just revise my action plan. So for example, my action plan in the morning is I wake up 6.45 in the morning or I wake up, wake up 6.30 in the morning and I meditate. Um, I say my gratitude statements and I take like 15 or 20 minutes to do this just before I start my day. So it's really, really important for me to do that and I say what I want for the day. I say my goals out. And sometimes if I'm able to, I write them out, right? Um, so if you can, try to write out your plan, especially when you first start. So write all of this out on a sheet of paper. I remember it might take you a few days to write all of this out. It's not going to happen in one day and it's not going to happen in one shot because you might need to research your tools. You might need to figure out how, what you're going to replace it with and what your why is. So what your higher purpose is. So don't punish yourself too much there. Give, you know, take it with a grain of salt and be able to make changes. Add your goals into your plan, right? So you can say for yourself, today um, I have two goals, so maximum three goals. And these are three goals that you should be able to obtain. They can't be unrealistic goals. So go back to smart goal planning. So if you're unable to even, you know, do those goals and they're not realistic and they're not time limited and they're not attainable, you're going to actually start punishing yourself. You're not gonna see that confidence, confidence, confidence loop. You're not gonna gain momentum. You're actually gonna say, I'm not capable of doing this and your negative self-talk is gonna start coming out again. So set your goals, set your plan and your action plan for the day. You can set it the night before, you can set it the day of. It takes like five or six minutes, just break your day down and see what you can do with it and attach your goals to it. And your goals should, you should take daily steps towards um, what your goals are. So if our goal is um, quitting smoking and over
overcoming procrastination, my daily goal is to have some type of awareness. So that's, the, that's what I'm gonna replace it with, procrastination with awareness. I need to do something to be aware. So how can I be more mindful? So create more consciousness. So I research tools around that. So how can I be um, more aware around with myself, with my own mind? So I do meditation. Um, how can I figure out patterns that are going on in my life? So I do journaling. So these are just things that I'm going to do and you're going to set goals around it. So if you're smoking and you want to overcome smoking, you're most likely going to choose things like running. So I'm going to spend 20 minutes per day smoking. So once you choose the time, you choose what you're going to do and how you're going to do it, write yourself your own mantra. So your own mantra is actually really important. So uh, in previous videos, we talk a lot about self-talk and negative self-talk. So negative self-talk is like a mantra that plays in our head. So we need to combat that mantra with our own mantra. And um, although positive affirmations also add to it, when you talk about creating this kind of mantra with what you're replacing, you're reaffirming that goal every day. You're reaffirming what you want to do. You're making a declaration to yourself and the people around you that you're going to take action towards this. And action creates momentum. Um, and you go back to the confidence, confidence loop, and you go back to what your why is, what your purpose in life is. So this is how it starts. So, um, so this is again, a lot of it's borrowed from Dr. David Schwartz and um, Charles Duhigg and Carol Dweck from Mindset and some other journals that I read at procrastination.ca. But I kind of changed it around for myself. So this is personally how I do it. So I tell myself, I am replacing either it's smoking or procrastination. I don't smoke, smoking's bad. Um, so I'm replacing smoking, you know, that's my what, with what I'm replacing it with is um, running, right, um, or procrastination, I'm replacing it with awareness. So then I pick my tool, buy. So, and then I write my tools down. So when I'm doing procrastination, I'm writing down, okay, I'm going to be more mindful. I'm gonna meditate, I'm going to journal, I'm gonna say gratitude statements, I'm going to, um, uh, you know, do, do other things to keep myself more aware. And I can test out tools, like I can create my major tools. So if you go back to tools, I kind of explain that. So test and try tools, see what works for you. We're all the individuals, um, we're all different individuals based on our own experience and what we take from it. And we have our own standard, our own definition, and different tools fit that definition, just like how screws, you know, different screwdrivers fit different screws, right? So pick your tools. So if I'm saying I want to replace it with running, but running's not really working for me because I, I'm still a heavy smoker, that, you know, it's taking time, so I'm going to do other activities. So I'm also triggered. So it also goes back to your triggers as well, your tools. So um, my procrastination comes out when I am doing certain things. So if I have a really large task and I don't know how to break it down or something that makes me really nervous, like essay writing makes me really nervous and I'll procrastinate around essay writing. So I'll start like binge watching TV, but I'm aware now, right? Because all of this is to create awareness. So awareness gives you the opportunity to make change. So if I'm more aware, then I know what tools I can use, but I know that's when it starts, like I know that trigger. So if a person is smoking, every morning when they get up and they have their cup of coffee, they wanna grab a smoke with it. So how do they change that? How do they curb that? Do they drink their coffee in a different spot? Do they put their running shoes on to see what, like to cue themselves or to trigger themselves to do something different other than smoking? Or do they add something different into their coffee? Do they start having tea instead of coffee because the smell of the coffee is triggering their need to smoke? So, and if, work, if running doesn't work, then you add something different to it. Just use a different tool, right? and use your accountability partners, go back to the tool video. And then when you say to yourself, okay, I'm going to devote this much time to it. So time is really important. So if you're unable to devote time to what you need to get done, 
then most likely you're not really going to replace the habit. And if you do replace the habit, kudos to you, you unknowingly did it. You replaced it, but chances are you could have replaced it with another negative habit. So devote some time to it every day. So either you're researching tools, because remember, our behavior comes out when there's triggers and cues, right? But my procrastination doesn't come out every day, but I need to exercise the tools every day to be aware so the procrastination doesn't overtake me. The same thing with smoking. Smoking might not be an issue in every situation, but you need to keep the tools going in order to keep that awareness, in order to, in order to keep that healthiness up so you don't go back to your coping strategy when negative self-talk goes come, comes back, right? So that's all in the first video, but it's really important to say this one to yourself. Write it down for yourself. Um, if you can, put it on your mirror. Uh, I know a lot of people when I started writing, not a lot of people, my family, <laughs> when I started writing out things for myself and putting them on my mirror, it was kind of like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm doing what I need to do, so deal with it. And, um, and it actually helps. When I, I, when I write my mantra down or I put it in my journal and at the beginning of my journal on the first page on the cardboard cover, I have my mantra written down. And I see it every day when I flip it open. So this is my declaration to myself. This is how I say I'm gonna devote like 20, 30, 40 minutes per day and or five minutes per day towards, you know, towards my goal, towards my why, towards my tools, right? So next thing is positive affirmation. So positive affirmations are actually really important. Again, with this mantra, this is not a positive affirmation. This is a declaration. This is what you're going to do for yourself. This is how you're going to do it, when you're going to do it. Your action plan is what you're going to do daily. But your positive affirmation is really to combat that negative self-talk. So if you go back to the first video, who best to combat you than you? So it's negative you versus positive you. So if you go back to the tools video, I talk about how to... Uh, do a positive affirmation. So a positive affirmation can't just be like, I am great, I am, uh, I am active, or I am not a smoker, I am healthy. That's like saying somebody ought to do something about that, or that's like saying, oh, you know what, it's not good to smoke, I, I'm not gonna do it. So it really needs to have feeling around it, it needs to have action around it. Um, it needs to have you in it. So your feelings need to attach to it and you need to attach to it. Because remember, your self-talk has built itself over time. It's catered itself to you. It's catered itself to your experiences. So your positive self-talk needs to cater itself to your negative self-talk and to what's going on in your life. It needs to cater to your why. It needs to cater to your higher purpose, right? So if I were to write a positive affirmation, just thinking on top of my head is, um, I am lovingly taking steps to be more aware so I can achieve my goals, so I can be the best version of myself every day. And this is a positive affirmation that I tell myself. I play it over and over again. So it has to be easy enough to play it over and over again. You can change it around, but try to kind of keep around the same thing. So if I'm looking at smoking and I go back to that why of, you know, honey, I, I want to grow old together. I want to be healthy together. I want you to be around for the kids, the grandkids. And then I say to myself, wow, you know, I want to be healthy so I can live a more active life and enjoy the people around me. So I talk about I am, so it's an I am statement, but I'm taking action and I'm building feeling towards it and I'm attaching it to my why. So positive affirmations are very important. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so next thing is visualization. So the reason why visualization is really important is discussed in the tools video, but visualization research is showing us if we can't feel or, or we can't see ourselves, if we can't visualize ourselves doing it in the future, most likely we feel we can't get there. It affects our self-efficacy, so our ability to our ability and our belief to succeed. So if you go back to visualizing, um, just it takes like 30 seconds to visualize yourself. So pick a feature about yourself or pick certain features about yourself, something that stands out, and visualize yourself taking the step, taking action towards your goal. So if I was trying to stop smoking, which I don't smoke, it's a very bad habit, 
um, and you go ahead and do that, you can visualize yourself running. You can visualize, visualize yourself being more healthy, taking deeper breaths, running upstairs. And what it does, it triggers mirror neurons in our head. So our brain, um, when studies are done, actually lights up in the same spots it would if we were doing that activity. Um, so you we're kind of teaching our brain how it would feel to do that. So um, visualization is very strong. There's lots of research on visualization. Also check out Jim Quick if you get a chance. He talks a lot about visualization in terms of learning and he shows you how to visualize and do it appropriately and accurately and get the best impact and he'll actually teach you how to learn from it as well. So I love you Jim Quick, thank you. Next thing is journal writing. So I talk a lot about journal writing as we go on, but in this process, journal writing is gonna be very important and appropriately writing your journal. So your action plan is gonna be different from journaling. Journaling is something that you're gonna do every day in order to understand what's going on. So when you're trying to figure out your why, um, and you don't really know it, because I did not know my why in the beginning. I was like, oh, I don't know what my life purpose is, live, I don't know, watch TV. Like, it was really hard. Like, I had to go through this entire process, but I did it, and I've come out stronger. So when I was writing down my why, I started journaling, because I needed to figure things out. But when I first started journaling, what I was doing is, I was kind of doing an action plan. I was doing what... I was writing down what I was gonna do or what happened throughout the day, but I wasn't attaching any emotion, I wasn't attaching any feelings, I wasn't attaching any thought, what I thought of the outcome. And it was actually not working. So when I, when I figured out that I actually needed to do that in my journaling, I started noticing patterns. So I started noting, noticing triggers. The reason I found out that I find essays so hard and I start procrastinating around the essays is because I feel that I need to do them perfectly. It's also how I found out I was a perfectionist. I needed to write that journal to see the pattern. I needed to write that journal to figure out how it affects me, How? what are the feelings that are coming out, what are the thoughts. So when you do that, you're actually also able to do something called cognitive behavioral therapy for yourself. You're able to mold back or think back and make changes in feelings and thoughts to have a different outcome. So if you get a chance to check it out, check out CBT. Um, there's lots of information on how to CBT yourself. I'm sure I'm not saying that properly, but it's okay. Um, journal daily, and it's really, really important to journal daily um, because again, you'll see those patterns. And another thing is a measure for what's happening. It's a measure for how you're feeling and how the changes are. So if I write a journal on day one, and I say to myself, you know, I did this for the first time, I, it was really difficult, I only did it for like 30 seconds, my awareness, um, I only meditated for like 10 seconds, I wrote my journal for like another two minutes, and I did this, and it's done now, right? And then I can see over time, I started adding five minutes, six minutes, and I start going back to my triggers and I start seeing this. And as I'm doing it, I see that I'm doing it. So it creates the, conf the confidence, confidence loop again, right? So I create momentum as I'm doing and I have a measure for how things are improving. So in the beginning, my journals were full of a lot of negative self-talk, like I'm not capable of doing this. And then I kept on going back to my positive affirmations. Like I, I had to figure out that I needed a positive affirmation to combat that negative, um, negative self-talk that I have, that automatic negative self-talk that continues to play in my head, right? So when I did this journal, I said, you know what, I really need a positive affirmation. And over time, I started noticing, noticing positive results. So that was the best thing for me. That was my measure. That was showing that I was having a good outcome. So every day, I can say to myself, okay, I'm having a out better outcome. It's not to say that I don't procrastinate anymore or people who smoke when they're going through really stressful times that they don't feel like going back to smoking. It's the fact that you're more aware and you're more capable. Um, and something like procrastination, yeah, I do procrastinate still, but I procrastinate a lot less. And when I procrastinate, I'm able to forgive myself and just move on to the next day and take steps to fortify what happened and figure out what happened because I am more aware. So everything is about creating more awareness and living more consciously. So devote time to yourself. Devote time to things like replacing habits, 
understanding yourself because once you're more aware, you have more knowledge and you're more capable of using. So remember, knowledge is not power. Knowledge is only a tool that you utilize. It's only power when you utilize it, just like power tools in the shed. Um, they're only tools and they only sit there and you only have the knowledge to use them, but they're only powerful when you actually utilize them and you start making changes in your life. And another thing is everything has a ripple effect. Remember, nothing is on its own. We are in context to the entire world and the world is in context to us. So everything that we do has ripple effects and everything that other people have, uh, people do have ripple effects on us. So when you start making positive changes in your life, you'll see positive things happening around you. And it won't happen immediately. Keep in mind, this is something that you have to repeat over and over again. Um, so when you do the exercise, the, only, the first time is write this down on the first few pages of your journal and make a complete list of it when you have it all kind of down and continue to go back to this mantra, continue to go back to this positive affirmation. But the only thing you need to do is write down your action plan, what you're replacing, your positive affirmation, your visualization, and your daily journal. These are the things that you need to do. So you don't need to write this process down every day. And over time, like this actually takes me about six or seven minutes um, because I've gotten really quick at it. I, I've learned how to write down my action plan. Most of the time my action plan looks very similar. I've uh, developed a habit, a pattern. So if you keep on continuing to change your day around a lot um, and you don't have things happening at a similar time, you're gonna have a little bit more difficulty. So um, it can still happen, but you'll have a little bit more difficulty. So write your action plan down. Try to make it a little bit of a pattern so you can establish a habit around it. And write um, down your mantra, write down your positive affirmation. Visualize just one minute per day, every night before you go to bed or bef um, before something stressful is gonna go on or if you know that you're gonna do something stressful or something stressful has happened. Go back to your why, go back to your visualization. See yourself achieving that goal and do your journal. So. Um, these are the main things that you need to do so you don't need to do this whole thing every day and just take a few minutes to do it and over time you'll get faster at it it'll become a better process for you and you'll create a habit around it so thank you very much for watching um, and I apologize if the screen is kind of off I couldn't get the camera to adjust properly so thank you so much again and I really appreciate